Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a special mermaid collaboration that was hosted by I Could Do That DIY. The doll artists who participated are Jackie O, The Hatter Dolls, I Could Do That DIY, Enchantarium, Dolly Pop, Stefu Doll, Electric Bunny One of a Kind, and myself, Blurred Colors Art. Last year I made a Rainbow High Ariel doll. The year before that I used a Laguna and made her a uh, new tail, but this year I wanted to do something new and different, so I'm going to use a doll that's already a mermaid. I chose Sirena Von Boo to be my base. I prepped the doll as usual, remove her head with hot water, cover my hands with a thick cloth to keep from burning myself, and take her face off with some 100% acetone. I use my thread snips to remove her hair and cut as closely to the scalp as I can. Then I scrape the inside of the head out with a screwdriver. This pulls the plugs into the head and I can use my forceps, or I think they're also called Kelly grips or Kelly clamps, to pull the glue out. Off camera, I painted her head with blue, purple, white, and black. I have some yarn in different colors that I want to try rerouting her with. To get the fiber that I need for the hair, I unravel the yarn. Then I tug at either end so that I get the longest strand possible. Brushing the hair out with a pet brush and tying it off just takes extra time and kind of hurts the bones in the back of my hand, so I prefer this method. To reroute her, I have a drill chuck with a needle that's cut off at the eye at a 45 degree angle. I slip the yarn into the eye and then plunge it into her head. Over and over and over again. If you're rerouting with yarn and your plug is a little too thick, you can always separate it out a little more. I concentrated on one color at a time, starting with black and then moving on to purple, then blue, and finally white since it had the least amount. Here you can see my daughter helping me with some of the purple. Here's how she looks with all the colors in place. I go ahead and fill the head with Fabri-Tac glue and let it dry overnight before finally brushing it out and releasing all the loose fibers. To prepare the head for the horn, I stuck a tack in the place that I had marked earlier, just to stretch the vinyl out a little bit ahead of time. I got these um, Christmas ornament hanger pieces metal i i don't know but they're just the right size so i'm going to use it as the base to sculpt the new horn on i loop one end and then thread it through the hole and pull it through the head with my pliers off camera i mixed together some two-part epoxy sculpt and rolled out a snake to prepare to make the twisted unicorn like horn my mermaid is going to be a narwhal. I haven't seen very many narwhal mermaids and they're just adorable creatures. I like the idea that the narwhals are the unicorn of the sea. And so for my doll, I would like to make her into a mage mermaid. I twist the epoxy around the hot glue and wire and then use my sculpting tools to blend it in place and get the shape right. I always accidentally mix up a little bit too much epoxy and well, my favorite thing to do with the leftover epoxy is give the doll a boob job. So that's what I'm doing now. I use lots of water and my fingers to blend the epoxy into the plastic. Off camera, I sand the epoxy modifications with a nail buffer. 
I looked up a bunch of different references for how narwhals look, and a lot of them have a flecking pattern with a darker backside and a lighter underside. So I decided to go ahead and just repaint the entire doll from tail to horn. I give everything a gesso coat and am using gesso for my white. I don't wanna to have too much texture on the face, so I'm doing a lot of blending with my finger and dabbing the paint around for the flecky. Although narwhals do not have blue and purple, I decided I wanted to tie in with the colors of her hair. She is a magical mermaid after all, so I'm also smooshing that around and blending it into the white and black with my fingertip. I do the same pattern on her face, but be careful not to make the paint too thick. I'm trying to do this all rather quickly while everything is wet. At this point, I had no idea what I was going to do with the rest of the doll, and I got stuck and let her sit for about a week. I still didn't know what to do, so I went ahead and did some concept art. And this is the design I came up with based on what I already had. So now that I have a direction to take the face in, I am sketching out her features with a regular number two pencil. It's just easier to erase, it's water-based, and totally safe to use on doll faces. I was worried about needing to press too hard and accidentally scratching off the base paint. Once I'm happy with what I have, I switch over to watercolor pencils and start adding a little bit of variation in color. For the most part, her face doesn't have very much color in it. For her makeup, I went for a natural look. She'll have a little bit of blushing and the most stark feature will probably be her long eyelashes. Here's how the first layer looks. I spray the doll with MSC again, and then I start painting in her eye whites. And I accidentally forgot to hit record for this layer. I just basically did the same thing, using my dark pencils to pump up the opacity of her eyelashes. I blended the transitions between the pencils and the paint with some pastels. I pumped up the brights with acrylic paint and I decided that her face needed to look a little cuter. So I went ahead and gave her some blue and purple freckles. I thought it might look nice to add a little bit of pink around the bottoms of her eyes. I didn't really want to put too much emphasis on the waterline, so this would be like the puffy bottom eyelid. This is another layer and I am just darkening her freckles adding a few highlights with my white pencil and deepening the shadows around her eyes. I've never done a doll with gray eyes before and I decided to give it a try for this one. The rest of the doll has such bright, vibrant colors, I thought it would balance it out nicely. And now her face is done. I love the way her soft wavy yarn hair looks, but it's not how I styled it in my drawing. And as lovely as it is, it's kind of boring to have the same hairstyle on all of your dolls. So I'm going to be separating out her hair into some chunky braids and then decorating it with gold pieces. Braiding this was relatively difficult. I had to try to anchor the doll with my pencil sharpener and Fabri-Tac and she still wanted to slide all over the place. 
So I only did a few braids on camera. The rest of them, the doll is just pinched between my knees and I'm braiding her hair in my lap. Here's how the final result looks. I like how stiff they are. You can kind of pose each of the braids individually. It can look kind of crazy, but it's like, you know, she's floating in water. It's nice. To decorate her hair, I have some gold beads and I'm just trying to find a needle that's small enough to pass through the hole of the beads, but also large enough to thread the hair with. I'm sure there's probably a more efficient way of doing this, but this is just the method I came up with. Some of her braids were a little unruly, probably from the angle that I braided them at, so I'm going to go ahead and sew them down into the other braids to hold them in place, at least at the top. I have these metal hair decorations that came with some box braiding hair. I'm going to cut it in half because they're a little thick for how small her braids are and then I'm going to place two of them in her hair. Even more of her hair decided to be unruly, so I'm just tying it off like she's the witcher in the back of her hair. I have some gold plated metal wire that I am twisting and then wrapping around her braids. I want to use a couple different designs and textures to create visual interest. In my sketch, I gave her some kind of gold twisted tiara, so I'm just trying to get the shape right and then thread it into her braid so it stays in place. I did have gold twisted around her horn in my drawing, but I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. I thought maybe I would use some metallic fingernail tape or something, but I decided that the best look would be to use this very thin floral wire. And while I was twisting it around, I broke the tip of her horn off. <laughs> but that's an easy enough fix. Little bit of super glue, and you can never even tell. I really like Sirena's original iridescent shimmer, so I'm going to go ahead and give the whole doll a coat in Liquitex iridescent medium. I think it becomes more opaque as you add more layers, but I don't really want to cover up the previous colors. I just want it to catch the light and shine. So I'm only giving her one coat. I have these little pearlescent half beads that I'm gluing onto the bottom fin. I'm just using Elmer's glue all and then tapping them into place. For her top, I used a paper towel to make a quick pattern. I have this lace that I got from my sister and I'm just gonna glue it straight to the doll. I don't plan on ever changing her outfit but this will be the most efficient way of keeping the shirt laying the way I want. I decided to repurpose her original silver chain fish scale skirt thing, and I'm going to paint it black. And my original idea was to cover it in chrome powder, but I can't find my chrome powder anywhere. Go ADHD. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to use my gold paint and make it look gold like that. I 
I have my Deco Art Extra Sheen Gold. I used a like a regular gold gold and then a rose gold to give it like a shift between colors. Then after it was dry, I coated everything in Sculpey Gloss Glaze to seal it and keep it nice and shiny. You want to keep this layer nice and thin or else it will dry foggy. Here's how it looks finished. But we're not done with her skirt. I have this old scarf that I got from my grandmother. It's got some holes in it and it's kind of worn, but it's nice and light. I think it will make the perfect butt cape. Since she's a magician or mage or wizard or whatever you want to call her, I think she needs a staff. I have a barbecue stick that I have cut the pointy ends off of and painted off camera. It also has a coat of Mod Podge to protect it from chipping. And then I have these little quartz crystals that I got from AliExpress. I'm going to wrap it in this gold floral wire and then attach it to the tip of the barbecue stick with hot glue. The hot glue isn't very secure by itself, so I'm going to continue wrapping the wire to make it more secure and to hide the ugly hot glue. <laughs> this is also floral wire. It is just a thicker gauge. While I have my hot glue gun out, I'm going to go ahead and give the end of her staff a little round ball that will get wrapped in wire in just a moment. In my sketch, I gave the middle of the staff a leather coated handle. I have some very thin pleather that has a little bit of a stretch to it that I'm going to cut into strips and then wrap around the staff. I secure it in place with hot glue. Then I add another strip spiraling down in the opposite direction to create a crisscross pattern. Then I wrap the entire grip back and forth in the same crisscross pattern with the thin gold floral wire. I finish off the top and bottom of the grip with the thicker wire. And her staff is done. Off camera, I made this cape for her. Um, I don't have any of the process recorded. I really struggled with understanding the pattern instructions for this one. I, I, I just, I think I had a brain malfunction on it. It's from Requiem Arts, and I will put the link for that in the description. And with that, my mermaid narwhal magician is complete. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to check out everyone else's videos. All of the mermaids turned out so lovely, they're gorgeous, and we have such a variety of dolls customized for this collaboration. Everyone's channels will be linked in the description box below, so please go check them out. Stick around if you want to see the reveal for my doll. I forgot to mention that I also gave her several different accessories with the floral wire and a very small chain necklace that I think is a real gold chain. I'm not sure. It was in some findings that I have. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Feel free to tag me on Instagram and share your work that you did for Mermay this year with me. Of the three dolls that I've made for Mermaid so far, I think this is probably my favorite. I don't have a name for her yet, 
So if you have any suggestions, let me know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time.